So, um, I decided to set up a, a, a palette for you guys to watch, show you how I mix color. And while I'm mixing color, I set up in fact two palettes, I didn't set up one. Let me show you the first one. The first palette I have, okay, um, is on white foam core, okay, with glass. It's a glass palette, which I would clean up with a, you could wipe it when it's wet, or you could use a glass scraper on it, if you wish, as you, as you go through your paints. I set it up also using clear plastic tape, so you can see it a little bit. Um, and the reason I did that is I wanted you to notice that the glass is actually smaller than the board that it's on, which I think is really important for you to understand that if you were to drop this on its edge, um, it would crack, but by having a border of foam around it, it's a lot less likely that that's gonna happen. I use these in my own studio now, so I set that up. I did a couple other things that I thought were interesting. So I've arranged my color, um, yellow, cadmium, or uh, pardon me, uh, red, uh, cadmium red, cad, uh, medium yellow. Um, I have a cooler, uh, a cooler lemony kind of a yellow that I bought uh, at um, I have yellow ochre black raw umber I put some more yellow on this side along with green Let me check my tube right now permanent green okay I should have kept these by me so I could just read them to you as I go and ultramarine with a larger area of white okay I have out now uh, a palette knife for mixing and when you mix, the general rule of thumb is I keep a cloth, I wipe, and let's just say for argument's sake, I wanna mix a couple colors to make an orange. I would go there. And mix, mix in the center. When I'm mixing color, I like to experiment. So I might take the same combination that I just used, mix it again, put this in the middle, wipe it, and then I might take a little bit of white, put it around the edge and see what I get. See how it becomes like a, a, a more of a salmon color add a little more white to it, what the, what happens. I might try the yellow, other yellow, which is a little bit stiffer here. Sorry, it's not the best pigment. This is an older pigment that I have. It's a little bit richer, holds its body more. The other one was smooth as opposed. I just added a little bit of water on my palette knife just to get that set. So who says we have to stop here? What happens if we drop a little green over here, wipe our palette, pull a little bit of this out into the green, what happens? It stays green. Let's try this then. Straight red into the green. It's giving me a different kind of a brown. It's still greenish. If I go get it one more time, Try a little yellow in that. Let's try try a little more of the body yellow and see where that goes. So this is a heavier body to it. It's similar to the yellow ochre, but it's greener. It's got a, you know, totally it almost matches, which is interesting to think about as you're mixing color. So I mix in here, okay, when I want to make a certain color, I'll mix a range. I always wipe after. I, I generally, I, I'll have a bigger palette even than, than this one sometimes. In your case, you'll have a wax palette. So you'll be able to mix and work with the color and then toss it if you want to. So I'm gonna wipe that off and push it a little further. I wanna go back into this red and see what happens when I put more of that in it. Because I wanna push it back to red for you. 
but it becomes kind of a cooler red. So that's a pretty wide range right off the bat. In fact, I'm gonna give you a little taste of that too. What's going on over here, if I do that? So you've got a, um, a brownish red, a quarter, more of a, um, like a terracotta color, like a brickish kind of a red, slightly warm. We've got our, our yellow ochre, but a yellow ochre that moves towards green. Um, you have these oranges, which I mixed, and a very light orange to start. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see what else we can add to this for a little fun. Let's go the other direction. Let's go here. I don't know if I have enough red. I might have to go get a little more. Yeah, I'm going to need to get a little more. I'd put it back right in the same spot. And if I was keeping a sketchbook, now listen, I know to do this without making marks and whatnot. If I was you, um, you guys, I would make notes for everything I did as I go. But that's a really wonderful array of, of uh, colors in the reddish family. And that's what I started with. So, um, so and that's all done on white. All right, if you notice, I did it on white uh, white foam core. I'm gonna move this just for a second to show you something else I did. If you look over here, and I hope you can read it, um, I have two types of canvas. I have white canvas down here, okay? And I wrote above it white canvas, all right, for, for applying color. I also toned this canvas. Toning a canvas is traditional. It's like an academic way. It's a way to work with a mid-tone and then your lights come forward and your darks go back, so your blacks will recede, your whites, you know, anything you light with, or tint with white will come forward. Um, so, and I, but I didn't just tone it, I, tinted, I toned it in a number of different manners. Let me talk about a couple of the ways that I went about it. The first one I have down here on the right is, this is just straight raw umber, but it's thick, okay? I put two coats of the raw umber, it's dry, all right, and I can paint on top of that if I wish. This is raw umber applied with a bristle brush Okay, one of the thicker brushes. Get that on canvas, camera for you. Um, apply with a thicker brush, but leaving a streak of the actual brush marks, which is kind of, some people just like that as a kind of a, it almost becomes a space. This feels flatter than that. So that's just one coat thin. Here I have raw umber, cadmium red, and yellow ochre in that section right there. Look at how different that is right off the bat. So it's a little bit of a warmer tone. And down here I have raw umber and, cat and ye uh, yellow ochre. Just, just those two mixed together and see how that looks. So you'd say, well, well, why would you do that? Well, let me show you first off. Let's take a brush. I'm gonna take a synthetic brush, one I particularly like. Uh, this is a, a long bristle synthetic, it's white, okay? I'm gonna get a little water on it so I can move my paint. Just for fun. Let's take this and let's drag it across here. Make it a little bit thicker. Okay. Here's the same color. Hopefully I have enough of it. I think I will. Across the white. Different results. You know, they look, these two things look different. Um, this is just straight red on a toned canvas. Hopped around a little bit. A little bit of water. Now on a white canvas. So those are kind of decisions you'd have to make. If I was mixing to paint on this, I would, instead of using white, as a support. I actually made one on cardboard, okay, with those colors. Let me put some white here and I'll experiment with it a little bit. So I'm not going to use a whole lot of color. I'm just going to use white. And I would say this, I am, uh, so I've mixed, I've been mixing with the palette knife. Another way to mix 
if you want, um, but you have to keep your brushes clean if you do, would be actually to mix with your paint brushes. So this is a nice pink, it's thinly applied. Just put a little white hi highlight on that. If I took that same mixture and applied it here, it's just different. Look at how different that feels. This you won't even see. Right, you can barely notice that it's there. So, um, I'd like to move this. I'm gonna move this one now. And bring the other back. And I'm gonna experiment a little bit on that tone paper. I'll leave those. I'm gonna clean my brush off. In fact, I might get a different brush right now. I think I will. I'm gonna keep clean my palette knife off and grab a different brush. I'm gonna grab um, a bristle brush rather than something soft. So this will leave a brush mark. The synthetics are nylon and they don't, you can blend with these really well. You can change things up a little bit. They're very smooth when they operate, but they don't, if you don't want them to leave a brush mark, they will not. Whereas the bristle brush can leave a brush mark, a very def definite brush, brush mark if you wish. Since I put this paint out, I'm actually gonna use it a little bit and just experiment some more. Yellow is a tough mixing color. I always encourage people to experiment with the yellow to see ways that you can push it. You can always force it back to yellow with more yellow. I may want to tint it a little bit and then add the yellow. Let's warm it. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move it to here. Then I'm gonna add that to it. And then I'm gonna drop it across the middle of that. So this is bristle brush. I mean, you can lay down thick brush strokes if you want. You know, these are carrying a little bit more, but that shows you what that looks like on that. I'm not opposed to painting. I paint on white mostly. What I generally do is, but that's the same thing here, here. And just look at, look at that. I mean, well, it's kind of interesting as a flesh tone to be perfectly honest. This, I added a little bit of yellow orange to it. Look at that wonderful little range I get between this kind of cool green, this kind of a lavender pink, and then a warm orange. And tonally, they're very close. I haven't even touched black. Let's see what happens when I add red and black together, how rich and dark that gets. Now, taking that and adding that here, you can still see it. I mean, tonally though, it's close, you know, There, you, where it's two coats, where it's two coats, it's very distinct. Where it's one coat, okay, where more of the white of the canvas shows through, it's a little less noticeable. I wonder, and I'm gonna answer this myself, I can. Um, 
what it's going to take to get that so it hovers. Let me even try that a little bit. All right, too pink, so I want to add, I'm going to add a little black and a little brown to it. This is the color it was mixed from. There's no, there's no reason I would not use that. How about that? I mean, you can barely, I put red in there. Um, I had a variety of, there was blue in this, you know, black, and then I added a little bit of the brown. You can't even tell. It's just thicker. So that's on a toned ground. What's this look like on the white canvas? Once again, these are uh, bristle brushes. You know, before it dries, you can paint into it. You can mix it a little bit. If you don't want to leave your path, I would recommend this. Grabbing a synthetic, going back in, and it'll get a lot smoother for you with the synth than it will with a bristle. Now I grabbed a little bit of that paint, which is a difficult. The motion you make is interesting. It's also important. Now, if you, if you notice, which I think is really kind of interesting, if you really study it a little bit, you can still see the pink, you can still see the green, and you can still see the yellow, which is, to me, fascinating. Um, but look at, I used the same colors on two different surfaces, a white one and a brown one. I had two different palettes. You know, I set up a second palette on cardboard, so, which is kind of, it's not an exact match, but at least it's brown to start. Like, it's close to that. So you got to consider, you know, not only what the paint will do, but what you're seeing it on and what, in your, what you're putting it onto and the tools that you use in order to do that. So that's a, a little bit of an introduction into how to kind of like mix color, you know, make choices on how you want to approach your canvas. You might want to consider this when we do the grisaille painting, maybe painting the backgrounds brown. Okay, and then working it up. Because what happens is this. Sorry, I'm a little chatty right now, so I'm going to go for it. Gray on this is really attractive. White on this, like a highlight, would be really attractive. Okay? Um, if you wanted to use blue as a way to cool things, That could be interesting. Um, if you wanted to turn the blue into a gray, just add a little black to it. Look at that. Very blue, bluish. So um, I hope that helps. I'll see if I can do a demo painting. Since I have the paints out, I'm gonna do a demonstration of a painting next. I just wanna get, get you started on mixing a little bit and I wanted to talk to you about color. I don't wanna go any further with this one. Um, you know, I have a variety of paints. I'll talk about those with the next video.